Okay, let's look at page 43, the last paragraph of the reading. Interpreting can have two meanings. Here it means interpretation, to give meaning to something, to explain something. But interpreting can also mean translation. Uh, when someone is talking and you translate that into another language, that is also called interpreting. Next line, Latin America. Um, this usually refers to uh, everything south of Mexico, so including Mexico and everything south of that. Uh, although you should always remember that Brazil does not speak uh, Spanish. Brazil speaks Portuguese. Uh, so it's not really a geography uh, concept. It's a language concept. In terms of geography, uh, Mexico is part of North America, and then you have a lot of small Central American countries, uh, and then beginning with uh, like Colombia, Venezuela, you have South America. But everything uh, south of the United States is called Latin America. Next line, this word, inexact, the opposite of exact. Um, so exact here means precise. Um, so the opposite of exact is not unexact, it is inexact. Uh, the word determine here means that um, something is certain. There is a correct answer. And you have to uh, try to find that answer. So it's not a decision. You don't make an answer. The answer already exists. You just have to find it. Next line, the word characteristic. Here it, it's a noun that means something like a special feature or attribute or trait. Um, but you also have the phrase to be characteristic of something, which means that that something uh, rep can represent. OK, A is characteristic of B means that A is a special feature of B. When you think about B, you will automatically think about A. A is characteristic of B. To cross your arms, sorry here, to cross your arms against your chest or to cross your arms in front of your chest. Um, this is how we say uh, Defiant comes from the verb to defy. To defy means to intentionally go against the rules. So to act defiantly means your actions uh, are going against what other people want you to do. Overgeneralization, uh, which means to use one idea to explain too many things. Um, I think in Chinese we might call this guodu gai gua hua, right? It's one idea, but you're using it to explain too many things. So generalizations and overgeneralizations about NVC. The idea here means that. Uh, when you see somebody do a certain action, uh, you always think that that action only has one meaning. 
That is overgeneralization. Um, so notice here that um, this example, Asians quite often look downward when talking with someone in a higher position. I'm not sure that's always true. That's maybe more true for like Japanese people, although that's also a stereotype, right? Not all Japanese people are the same. Um, but apparently Western people think that this is something that Asian people do, especially East Asian people. Um, and because in the West uh, they value communication where you look into the other person's face or you look into their eyes. So if you don't do that, some people will think that you are untrustworthy. You cannot be trusted. In fact, uh, just like five or six years ago, there was a best-selling book by somebody who used to work for the FBI uh, telling you how to catch a liar, how to see if somebody is lying. And one way, he said, is if they talk and they don't look you in the eyes, they're probably lying, which is bullshit. Uh, but this is a um, assumption that Western, a lot of Western people have. To look you in the eye just means to look at your eyes when you're talking. Um, and this conclusion, it sounds good, but if you think about it, it doesn't really make sense. Just the previous sentence, it said, uh, don't overgeneralize NVC. One action can have many meanings. But here, the conclusion says that maybe if we pay attention to NVC, we'll know when someone is lying uh, and we'll know what someone is really thinking. Doesn't make sense. Uh, OK, so do you have questions about this paragraph or this entire reading? OK, then let's go to the next page um, and look at these vocabulary words. The first word, Q. A Q is a sign for something to happen or for someone to do something. You can think of it as uh, a signal or a hint. In Chinese, we call this ti si or da pas. It can be a noun. It can also be a verb. To cue someone means to give them a, this kind of signal. Um, gathering, I think we talked about this last week. To gather means to collect together. So a gathering is a collection of usually its people. Limitation is different from limit. A limitation is a kind of reason or situation that creates limits. So the limitation of this idea, for example, does not mean that this idea is limited. It means that this idea does not allow for uh, some aspects of thinking. A zone is an area. That's it. It just means area. See, we talked about most of these. Uh, verbal means talking. It's related to the, it's, it, the meaning is very close to the word oral, which means related to the mouth. So sometimes you will see people say verbal practice. Sometimes you will see people say oral practice. It both mean talking. Let's see. Kinesics, I think we talked about this. This opening, kini, means movement. So kinesics is the study of human movement. Proxemics. 
prox this opening means distance, especially close distance. So this is the study of personal distance. OK, do you have questions about these words? All right, let's go to the next page and do these vocabulary questions. Let's see. I will give you 10 questions, right? I'll give you 10 minutes and then we'll compare answers.
OK, let's see what answers you have. Question one. My other uh, my mother always said uh, stand up straight. To correct my. Posture. Posture. Number two, the teacher. Divided. The class into small groups. Divided. Three. The distance between a mother and a child is classified as intimate distance. Intimate. Four. Most people in Taiwan speak English is an example of a generalization. Generalization. Number five. People refer to the area within arm's length as your personal distance. Personal. Number six. My family lives in many different places, but we all Gather together for special holidays. Gather. Number seven. I always obey my father because he'll withhold my allowance if I act defiantly. Defiantly. Uh, let me explain this one. Obey means to follow the law, follow the rules. Withhold means to not give. And allowance is the money that you would give a child um, for daily use. Number eight. Straight posture and looking someone in the eye when you meet them makes a good first impression impression number nine the new animation movies show that the earlier technological what do you guys think this one is it doesn't appear on our vocabulary list. It's probably something like obstacle obstacles. Oh, I know what it is. Sorry. Limitations. Technological limitations. Have been overcome. Number 10. It is difficult to. Interpret. NVC, so be careful when traveling to other countries. Interpret. OK, do you have questions about the vocabulary questions? Uh, let's go back to the la the previous page. I, I want to talk a bit more about these two words, kinesics and proxemics. You don't need to know these two words. You'll never see these words ever. But the root of the word can be very useful. So as I said, kini means movement. Uh, the most common word in English to use this word root is probably kinetic, which means related to movement. So kinetic energy is energy 
of an object because it is moving. Another related word is cinema or movies. Movies are short for moving pictures. So the cinema refers to movies because uh, the word root C I N E K I N E, same thing, means movement. Um, as for this word, I said that proxy means close distance. And the most common English word to use this word root is proximity, which means close distance. So uh, you might see that A is in close proximity to B, which means that A is very close to B, in a very close area next to B. Um, or if you watch a movie about like people robbing a bank, you might hear the word a proximity alarm, which means that if someone gets very close to that thing, an alarm will go off. Uh, so proximity, close distance. OK, so we did vocabulary, we did the comprehension questions. Let's look at some body parts on page 46. So first, related to the eyes, you have the eyebrow here. Mei um, And if a person's eyebrows are connected, in English we call that a unibrow. Then we have eyelash, yan Usually this is in plural, eyelashes. I don't think you would talk about one eyelash only. Uh, then you have the eyelid, yan um, In the West, they don't really care if you are just, what is it? 单眼皮,双眼皮. Um, but if you ever need to talk about it in English, those are called a single fold eyelid or a double fold eyelid. Uh, next, you have the word pupil. The pupil is the black point at the center of the eye. Um, by the way, the word pupil also can mean student. It's, it's completely unrelated to eyes, um, but you might need to know that. There is another important part of the eye that uh, the textbook did not give us. The iris. The iris is the part of the eye that has color. So when you say someone has blue eyes or green eyes or brown eyes, you're talking about the iris. Okay, next, face. The bridge of the nose is the, the center part of the nose, especially the part that, that goes between your eyes. Like the high, the high part of your nose is the bridge of your nose. A bridge, uh, it can mean like uh, a structure connecting two points across a distance, chaoliang. It can also mean um, the part of a mountain that is like the high part connecting two mountains, anbu. So when you talk about the bridge of the nose, you're using the second idea, like the, the part of the mountain that connects two high mountains. The brow, we just talked about this. The brow is just the eyebrow. The cheek, lian jia, right? The side of the face. Uh, if someone is blushing, it means that their cheek is turning red, lian hong.
uh, and you might have heard to turn the other cheek, uh, especially related to like uh, when people talk about Jesus, right? When um, Jesus says, when someone hits you on the cheek, to turn the other cheek. 另外一边也给人家伤 Next, chin. This is the the bottom of the face. Shaba. To take it on the chin means to be stoic and to be brave and not to avoid um, getting hurt or to avoid punishment. To take it on the chin just means to accept the consequences. The it usually means a punch. Corner of the mouth. This is the side of the mouth, uh, especially like when someone is smiling, right? If you smile, uh, there there is like an angle at the side of the mouth. That's called the corner of the mouth. Forehead. This is the part of your face between your hair and your eyebrows. This is an interesting word. Head. I'm sure you know this word. For means front. So forehead actually means the front of your head. Jaw. This is the part of your face that is like the, the lower half of your mouth. Uh, when someone is very surprised, you, they might be described as their jaw is on the floor, which means their mouth is open. Uh, and then you have the uh, classic shark movie, Jaws, directed by Steven Spielberg. Um, it's referring, of course, to the fact that a shark can open its mouth and like bite you and eat you. Next one, lips, the surrounding area of the mouth. Next one, temple. Your temple is um, the side of your head. Um, but actually, the two are not exactly the same. In English, is the solar plexus. But it's in the same area. So uh, you actually, each person has two temples, one on each side. And for a completely unrelated reason, temple also can um, mean a building for religion. And then last one, tongue, 舌头. The, in, the, the muscle inside your mouth. Um, the, the front end of your tongue is called the tip of the tongue, 舌尖. Sometimes if we um, want to say something, but we just can't think of that word, we might say, it's, it's just on the tip of my tongue, which means I can almost say it. Okay. Um, it doesn't mention teeth, but I'm sure we all know what teeth are. Okay, next, the hand. Thumb is the strange finger, muzi. Index finger is the one you use to point with, Uh It's called an index finger because to index here means to uh, to point at, to, to um, point out, I guess you would say. Like to let other people know that this is what you're talking about. So this is the index finger, shizi. The middle finger, uh, as I'm sure you can tell, this is the finger that it has no particular meaning, and that's why it's called the middle finger. 
，没有特别意义，就叫它中指吧。The ring finger is the next one where if you get married, you're supposed to put your wedding ring on this finger. The little finger or the pinky is the small one. Uh, the palm is the center of your hand. Uh, 掌心 On the opposite side is the back of your hand. 手背 uh, And one more word I think you should know is knuckle. 关节指关节 A knuckle. Uh, and then the the front of each finger is called the fingertip. Zijin. Fingertip. Yes, it should be one word. Um. I'll give you another one. Oh no no, it it comes later. Okay, we'll talk about this later. Uh, and then for the like other main parts of the body. Ankle. The ankle is that big bone、uh, connecting your leg to your foot, 脚踝 The ball of your foot is like,、uh, how do I say this? If you stand like near the front of your feet, so not at the tip of your feet, but near the front, it's it's this part. Is the ball of your foot? So, like, if you're getting ready to move, you would stand on the ball of your feet. The calf is the lower leg muscle. Chest,、uh, front of your torso. Elbow is the main.、Um, Hinge of your arm, where your arm can bend. 那个手肘 Foot, feet. I'm sure you know. Forearm is、uh, the front part of your arm that connects your hand,、uh, your your hand to your elbow. 手背，另外一个背 Heel is the back of your foot. Jalgun. Hip is the side of your your body. Kwangu. Knee. Shigai. Neck. You know neck. You know shoulder. Spine. We talked about spine. Jizuigu. Stomach. Thigh is the upper half of your leg. Upper arm is like the part between your shoulder and your elbow. Waist,、yeah. and then wrist. The wrist is the part of your hand that can turn, right? 那个叫什么？突然忘了 wrist 是什么，中文是什么？什么？手手腕，对手腕，谢谢。Yes. Okay. Do you have questions about these body parts? Okay, let's take a short break.
OK, let's continue. So at the bottom of page 46, we have some descriptions of basic movements. Uh, so the first one to cross your legs at the knee. There are two ways of crossing your legs, right? One is like this. Uh, and the other one is like this. The second one, the one I'm doing now is to cross your legs at the knee. Number two, to stick out your tongue to settle. Um, like these movements. Um, are usually described using these words. If you try to describe these movements using other words, people might not understand you. So uh, number three, to wrinkle your forehead, so may. The word wrinkle means to like to it, it, as a noun, a wrinkle is not smooth. So like if your piece of paper is uh, not smooth, then it is a wrinkled piece of paper. So to wrinkle your forehead means to make your forehead not smooth. Number four, to smooth your hair. Sometimes you'll hear to smooth back your hair. Um, uh, number five, to brush the tip of your nose with your finger. So the, the important part of this one is to brush the tip of your nose, like to like touch the tip of your nose. It could be with a finger. It could be with like a, a pet or it could be with someone else's nose. But like touching the tip of your nose, we usually use the word brush, schwa, for some reason. Number six, to pull down the corners of your mouth. Uh, in other words, to frown. A frown is the opposite of a smile. When in a smile, the corners of your mouth go up. In a frown, the corners of your mouth go down. So to pull down the corners of your mouth is a frown. Although it may not be uh, always a negative expression. Sometimes you'll see somebody pull down the corners of their mouth as an expression of admiration. Hmm, like that kind of expression. Seven, wrinkle your nose. Uh, Like uh, think of a cat moving its nose around. In a in a cartoon. Number eight, raise your eyebrow. Yang Mei. Next page, number nine, to blink. Zayin. But this is both eyes. To blink is to use both eyes. If you only blink with one eye, that is called a wink. Zai Ziyin. Uh, in Chinese, the phrase Zai Ziyin, Bi Ziyin, we, there's no English phrase for that. That's not, it, in English, that doesn't have a special meaning. Um, like you can say to close one eye, but it doesn't mean like uh, to overlook something. It just means you're doing that motion. Number 10 is not a description. It's not a conventional description. Uh, so, but we can we can remember this to cross your arms. In front of your chest, 胸前交叉. Number 11, to interlock your fingers, just to like to put your hands together like this. Uh, to like put your fingers through each other. Number 12, cross your legs at the ankle is the first kind of crossing your legs, right? This one. 13, 
to tap your foot. Usually we don't have to say with your heel on the floor. Uh, to tap your foot. Means like to, as it says here, right, to keep your foot on the floor, but the front half of your foot is going up and down. If you don't keep your heel on the floor, you're not tapping, you're stepping. That's high. Uh, and the opposite, if you keep the tip of your foot on the floor and you um, tap your heel, that's called to bounce your feet. Uh, I guess in Chinese we call that tan jiao or something. Bounce means tan tiao. 14, to purse your lips means uh, ming zui. Uh, the word purse also means like the small bag you use to hold money. 15, suck in your stomach. Uh, we, we say suck in because in order to suck in your stomach, usually people will take a breath, uh, will breathe in. Number 16 is describing uh, bouncing your feet, as I said. Number 17, to roll your eyes, fan bai yin. Uh, number 18, to jut your chin forward or to jut your chin out. Uh, it's actually like if you look up, right? If you look up, your chin goes out. Like uh, sometimes you might see people, instead of nodding to each other, they might go, hey, what's up, right? To jut your chin out. Uh, 19, to push your glasses against the bridge of your nose. It just means to push up your glasses. Tui Yan Jing. Yang. To push up your glasses. Uh, and then 20, put your hands on your hips. So Ta Yao. Um, another way to describe this is with your arm akimbo. OK, do you have questions about these actions? OK, let's turn to page 48 and talk about some grammar, my favorite subject. Uh, so we're looking today at modals of possibility. Um, uh, so let's go through these one by one, and then we have some practice questions. Uh, can and could. Every time you have an O-U-L-D option, it means it is less possible or it is more polite to say it like that. So, uh, for example, if I wanted you to do something, I might say, uh, can you blah, blah, blah. But if you wanted me to do something, you might say, could you blah, 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 because could is more polite. Uh, the opposite, can't, couldn't. But also notice, cannot is one word. I don't know why, but this is the only um, word in English where not is part of the word. It's one word, cannot or cannot. Um, and this simply means that it is impossible. May. It could mean sometimes true. It could also mean you are allowed to do something. Um, but if you're talking about it's sometimes true, then the weaker or po more polite form is might. 
So I may be able to do something means maybe yes, maybe no, but I might be able to do something means maybe not, but maybe yes. Like the, it's it's l less likely. OK, must and have to. Nobody says must anymore. Everybody just says have to. Um, if you do see must, it's usually not. It usually doesn't mean necessary. It's it usually it's a prediction. Tweeting your chi. Like uh, you haven't had lunch, you must be hungry. Tweeting your chi. Next one. Don't have to. Notice this difference, right? Have to is necessary, and the opposite is don't have to. But must as necessary, the opposite must not means it is forbidden. So even though these two words can sometimes mean the same thing, the opposite of these two words each mean a different thing. So don't have to, it's not necessary. Must not means you are not allowed to. Uh, or must not could also be a prediction, tweeting your chi. He's hungry, he must not have eaten lunch. Should you sh uh, something that it, it would be a good idea to do, should not is something that would be a bad idea to do. Uh, sometimes you will see ought. You ought to do something. Or you ought not do something. It's more common in British English, but you might also see it in American English. OK, do you have questions? Let's do these uh, practice questions together. Actually, no, no, I'll, I'll let you do these uh, on your own. Please only go to question J. All right, so A to J. That's 10 questions. I'll give you uh, five minutes. And then we'll compare answers.
OK, let's compare answers. I remember there might be more than one correct answer. So if your answer is different from my answer, uh, please tell us your answer and we can talk about it. A, people can learn more about NVC to help understand each other better. Can. Do we have other answers? Uh, another possible answer is should. Uh, it depends on how important you think this is. If it's very important, you would say should. B, in American culture, you should not stick up your middle finger, bi zongzi. Should not. Do we have other answers? OK, C. If someone's eyebrow twitches, dong. During a conversation, he or she may be lying or might be lying. I would say might because I think this is not very likely. Do we have other answers? D, because NVC is cultural, one gesture can have many meanings. Uh, can. Do we have other answers? OK. E, you must not think that your interpretation is the only correct one. Must not. Uh, another weaker answer is should not. Like must not in Chinese would be something like uh, So it's much stronger than should not. Either one I think is OK here. Do we have other answers? F, every day I should brush my teeth or have to or must. Uh, again, it depends on how important you think this is. Uh, if you think it's very, very, very important, you would say have to. Other answers? OK, G, uh, G. I have to do my homework, but I don't want to. Um, this one I think should is not strong enough. Because the second half of the sentence says I don't want to. So it's no longer just is it a good idea or a bad idea. It's something that this person has no choice. They have to do it. Do we have other answers? H. Students should not watch too much television. Other answers? I, the new Minister of Education, Jari Buzang, says that Taiwan's education system should teach students to love reading. Other answers? Uh, again, it depends on how passionate this new Minister of Education is. 
if he or she truly believes that this is something very important, they might say must or has to teach students to love reading. And J, everyone should or must or has to be really careful if they ride a scooter, jita, in Taiwan. Again, it depends on how important you think this is. If it's really, really important, you would say have to or has to. Sorry, has to, danshu. OK, other answers to this question? Do you have questions about this part? OK, let's look at page 49. Um, and you guys will have a chance to practice speaking. Uh, so the idea here is there are di many different groups of people and uh, you will talk about like some stereotypes that you might have about these people uh, and then you can talk about why or where you have these stereotypes from um, so let's quickly go through these people indigenous peoples we used to call them aborigines but really the word aborigine only uh, refers to indigenous people in Australia. The word indigenous means from this land. Nobody says hip hoppers anymore. This is very 2002, 2003. Filipino is someone who is from the Philippines. Filipino is a man, Filipina, Ajewe is a woman. Uh, notice how you spell this. The Philippines is spelled with a PH, but Filipino, Filipina is spelled with an F. A woman with very short hair wearing jeans and a t shirt. That's not too unusual today anymore. Uh, let's see. Earring Erhuan. You can tell that this means Erhuan, right? Ear and ring, a ring that you put on your ear. A Thai is someone from Thailand. Tattoo, Tsiching. African American. Today we don't use the hyphen. African American. Mini skirt, Skirt is uh, ching, ching. Okay, yes, mini skirt is ching. High heeled shoes, Um, Let's see. Today we don't say Britons, we say Brits. Um, Haka Kajaran. Yeah, okay. So uh grab okay, let's let's look at the uh questions after these groups of people. So the first part is what stereotypes do you have about these people? And then uh here are some questions about those stereotypes. What verbal cues give you this impression or like verbal signals? What nonverbal cues give you this impression? From where specifically did you receive your information? Was it on television, newspaper, personal experience, parents, a friend, or, or other places? Does your partner feel the same way? Why might these ideas be a stereotype? Uh, when did your stereotyped ideas begin? How can this stereotype be beneficial? How can it help that person? How can it be detrimental? How can it hurt that person? 
Is it possible for stereotypes to be beneficial? Can a stereotype help a person? You, uh, you can think about that and talk about that with your partner. How important are the nonverbal cues to you in formulating your opinions? To formulate just means to to shape, to create, to to come up with your opinions. And then do you have any personal experiences? How do those experiences relate to your stereotypes? Do they reaffirm, which means to strengthen or confirm or contradict, which means go against your stereotype? OK, grab a partner. Choose one of these groups of people. Um, talk about what kinds of stereotype ideas you might have or other people might have about that group of people. And then discuss the questions at the bottom of the page. OK, grab a partner.
Let's vote at page 52. This is also a speaking practice. It's role playing, Joseph. I know. Um, so you have 10 situations. Choose one. Let's look at these situations. Number one, you're in a movie theater watching an exciting movie. A really interesting scene has just begun. Unfortunately, some parents brought their four-year-old child. The child starts to run up and down the aisle, so long, so long, and make noise. Number two, you're at a tea house or a coffee shop with your good friend. You see a really cute person one table away. You would like to meet that person, but you don't want to be rude to your friend. Number three, you and your friend are at a buffet in Taiwan. Notice that the tea is silent, tea providing buffet. You know which foods are really good and which ones are not, but this is your friend's first visit to Taiwan. Your friend is four people behind you in the line. Your friend looks at you to see whether or not to try a certain food. Tell your friend which foods are good, which ones are so-so, and which ones are really awful, really bad. Number four, you're at a small shop in Taiwan. You want to know how much something costs. The manager is watching television. You really want to buy the item because it's something that you have wanted for a long time. But the manager wants too much money for it. Negotiate the price. Number five, you're at a wedding banquet. A wedding banquet. And see someone whom you haven't seen in months. The people at your table are talking to you, but you want to get your friend's attention. Number six. You're at an electronics store because you want to buy a new stereo in shop that is on sale today only. You ask the sales clerk some questions. You want to think about what the sales clerk told you before you actually buy the stereo and spend so much money. But the clerk follows you wherever you go. The store closes in one hour, so you must make a decision. Seven, you are telling your parents about A, your poor grades this semester, B, your tattoo, C, your newest body piercing, or D, some other bad news. H, you enjoy being with your boyfriend or girlfriend very much, but you think someone you met the other day is really more suitable for you. You think it would be good to begin dating other people. Your partner can either agree or disagree with this idea. Number nine, you are scheduled to have a meal with your good friend. You didn't know, however, that your friend was going to bring along someone you really dislike. Someone you really do not like. Although you really dislike your friend's friend, you like your friend. Number 10. You aren't paying attention to your driving as you go home. Before you know it, you and your scooter have an accident with someone in a car. Solve the situation quickly before someone calls the police. Uh, this should say resolve, resolve the situation. Okay, grab a partner, choose one of these situations, uh, and act out this situation using English and body language. And I will give you 10 minutes.
去抓旁边的人，然后选一个情境演出来。
Okay, let's go to page 53. 
Here, our textbook gives us a tip for writing. And this idea is to pay attention to genre, one day. Uh, this word is from French, so uh, the pronunciation is very strange. It's genre. It's not genre, it's genre. Uh, and the plural is genres. So the genre, genres. And the idea is that every piece of writing is some kind of genre. And if you want to learn to write in that genre, you should read good examples of writing in that genre. And it explains the word genre using this word, a mold. So the idea is that each genre is like a certain shape, and you fit your ideas into that shape. So if you want to, for example, if you want to learn how to write a good business email, then you should read lots of good business emails. If you want to learn to write a good argument, uh, then you should read examples of good arguments and uh, to pay attention to how writers write a certain genre, how each genre organizes information. Uh, some of these words, let's see, a satire is feng si wen. And a sermon is like uh, in religion, a speech by a pastor or by a priest. OK, and here we have an optional writing assignment. If you want to do this practice, you can email it to me and I will correct it for you. Uh, so the assignment is to write a paragraph on one of these topics. You can choose one of the situations on page 52 and write a paragraph about it. You can go observe people's reactions to like homeless people, mentally ill people, disabled people, drunk people, poor people. Uh, observe how people behave uh, with how people interact with these groups of people. You can turn off the sound and watch a TV commercial. Pay attention to people when you are on a bus or a train or the MRT. Observe the teacher teaching. Don't observe me. Uh, observe people in a cafeteria or a restaurant. Turn off the sound and watch one scene from a Western movie and a Chinese movie and compare these two kinds of movies. So if you want to practice your writing, you can write a paragraph on one of these topics. Email it to me and I will correct it for you. Okay, uh, 54, let's do some listening practice. Uh, let's look at these questions first. Question one, the person telling the story is probably a tourist, a cook, a business person or a teacher. So from this question, we know that uh, somebody, the speaker, is telling a story. So what kind of person is this? Question two, why does the speaker think the people in Taiwan are friendly? Because they wave to bus and taxi drivers, which I'm is also because they smile, because they are quiet, 
or because A and B. Three, where did the speaker probably live before coming to Taiwan? Thailand, Japan, Korea, or we don't know. It doesn't say. Question four, did the speaker ever find the bathroom at the restaurant? Okay, so the story will probably tell us that the speaker was at the restaurant and he or she needed to use the bathroom. So did the speaker find the bathroom? Yes, no, we don't know. All right, has the speaker studied about NBC and gestures in Taiwan since he or she moved here? So right after they moved to Taiwan, did they study body language? Yes, no, we don't know. Okay, so those are the questions. Let's listen. Okay, so let's look at these questions again. Number one, uh, the speaker is probably 
and you need teacher D. And near the end of her talk, she mentions she's in a classroom with students, so she's probably a teacher. Number two, why does she think people in Taiwan are friendly? Well, near the beginning, she says that people wave to everybody, including to bus and taxi drivers. And near the end, she said that all of her students smiled at her and made her feel like they were very friendly. So the answer is D, both A and B. Number three, where did the speaker probably live before coming to Taiwan? Well, she doesn't name a country. She only says that in that country, when they meet new people, they bow from the waist. They bow. Uh, Thailand, Japan, Korea. All three countries bow. So we don't really know which one. The answer is P. It doesn't say. Number four, did the speaker ever find the bathroom? Yes, no, it doesn't say. She's very confused about the directions to the bathroom. But did she end up finding it? We don't know. It doesn't say. So the answer is C. Number five, has the speaker studied about body language after moving to Taiwan, near the end of her talk, she said that she gradually began to learn the meaning of smiles and body language. So the answer is A, yes. Uh, let's read, uh, sorry, let's listen again and see if you can catch this information. Thank you. 
Okay, let's move on to page 55. Uh, we will listen to a conversation. Uh, so let's look at the questions first. Number one, what year is the university student in? Freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. Number two, what is the first activity that the friend suggests to help the student feel better? Number three, where does the friend suggest that they have a karaoke party? Uh, I know it's spelled K-A-R-A, -A, but in English it's K-R-E-O-K. Uh, A at a KGB, B at a karaoke bar, C at an MCU, D at the friend's house. Number four, after the student declines, which means decides not to, go to a club, one, uh, no, no, yeah, yeah, or a disco, he, he says he wants to, A, hang in, hang in does not mean anything, there's no such phrase as hang in, B, hang up, which means to end a phone call, or C, hang out. Okay, number five, which two sports or activities will the speakers probably do today? Okay, let's listen to this conversation. Thank 
Okay, let's compare answers. Question one, what year is the student in? He is in his last year, so D, senior year or fourth year. Number two, what activity does the friend suggest first? They go grab some coffee at a coffee shop and talk about things. Number three, where did the friend suggest they do karaoke? She says, why don't you come over to my house? So the answer is D, at the friend's house. Number four, uh, what does he say he wants to do? C, he wants to hang out, uh, which means he wants to do nothing together. Number five, which two things do they agree to do? Number one, shoot some hoops, which means play basketball. And the second one is shoot some eight ball. Eight ball is a kind of pool, functional. Uh, there are many different games you could play uh, on a pool table. Eight ball is one of them. Uh, so to shoot pool. Uh, Did you catch this information? Let's hear it one more time and pay attention to uh, where this information appears.
Okay, do you have questions about this listening practice? Well, that's the end of unit four. Do you have questions about unit four? That's also the end of the first half of the semester because the midterm exam will only be on minutes two, three, and four. So do you have questions about the, the uh, material for the midterm exam? Okay, well, uh, we still have two weeks until the midterm. So what we're going to do is we're going to watch uh, these videos related to each unit. And at the back of the textbook, there is a series of video exercises. Uh, let's see. So starting here, that's in two act one overseas studies. So we have some questions that we can uh, answer after watching the videos. So that's what we're going to be doing next week and the week after that. Okay, uh, so let's stop here for today. And if you have not yet signed in, please come and sign in.